At the Edinburgh Festival earlier this year, Sarah Millican won the If Dot Comedy Award for Best Newcomer for her brilliant stand-up show. Now she's here to open our new series of one-offs of new comedy talents in her first ever radio show. When the tears come streaming down your face When you lose something you can't replace I will try to fix you Keeping Your Chins Up, starring Sarah Millican. In March 2004, my husband of seven years gave up smoking and was tetchy. He also gave up me. Clearly living with me had a damaging effect on his heart. My culinary skills affected his ability to taste food. And after a year without me, he was able to buy a car. (laughs) I bullied him into going to Relate where we paid £70 for a man to say he could do nothing for us. (laughs) They were the most expensive tissues I've ever snotted into. (laughs) Abandoned like an advanced cancer that I hoped at the time was grown on his lungs. <laughs> we trundled off to Frankie and Benny's where he ordered and devoured many a chicken wing. I could do nothing but vomit. At least I was getting thinner. <laughs> While he was eating what appeared to be the first meal of the rest of his life. In an impressive display of a lack of communication, we argued about broccoli like a snapshot of our relationship. A photograph in which I suggested he didn't like the vegetable, to which he countered, I've always liked broccoli, you just never got any in. (laughs) It was the fear that I may in future withhold much-loved vegetables from other men, (laughs) which encouraged me to consider one-on-one counselling. Up until then, I had deemed counselling only for those who didn't have a loving, understanding family and countless friends to cry at. I rang the Samaritans first, who didn't laugh when I told them not to worry that I was rubbish at tying knots. (laughs) My dad told me recently that women only ever kill themselves by slitting their wrists in the bath, because they don't like to make a mess. (laughs) Like it'd clear up the thickest of it, leaving a note that said, I can't take any more, the flash is under the sink. (laughs) After a small waiting period, my appointment arrived and I was subjected to an hour of tepid counselling for beginners including a questionnaire with ticky boxes. I have planned my own funeral. Strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree. (laughs) When she totted up my answer and said, clearly disappointed, it's a very low score. (laughs) I answered, do I not win the car? (laughs) She proceeded to bully me into crying and leave thinking that she'd done a good job. She hadn't, of course, and I realised that for every bad counsellor, there was a good one. Just as for every hairdresser that made me look like someone's nana, There was one that made me look like, well, me, only better. (laughs) And for every doctor who nearly killed my sister, there's one that saved my dad. People choose to have counselling for all sorts of reasons. Obviously, mine was at the end of a relationship. And I'm wondering, have we got anybody in who split up with somebody recently? (laughs) Do you want to give us a woo? (laughs) Ah, fella at the end just did a little wave. Nice fella at the end. Can we have a microphone for the fella at the end? (laughs) Oh, bless him. Did he think the little wave would be enough? (laughs) Hello, what's your name, fella? Hello, my name's Louis. And how long had you been with your partner, Louis? Uh, Less than a year. Less than a year. Is it still valid? (laughs) I think it is. He seems like a nice fella. And how long have you been split up? Uh, Since Saturday. Since... Do you want to come up and do a bit? (laughs) I'm trying to work out what day it is. Oh, it's not. So it's really literally days, isn't it? Well, it would have been no matter what day it, it was. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I've just figured out how the calendar works. Um, so the burning question: Have you had sex with anybody else since? Uh, no. No. And are you, are you on the lookout? Are you asking? For oh. A- um, <laughs> I wasn't really planning on pimping myself out tonight. Uh, uh, tell me, nice fella, have you considered counselling? Uh, no, not really. Would you? Not in this case. She was the mental one. <laughs> so because I had counselling, are you therefore implying that... <laughs> Thank you, Louis. Bless you. Um, 
So I think generally, because I, I, I did obviously see a counsellor and I found it really useful. And obviously this counsellor that I'm talking about, the first one that I saw, wasn't really ideal. And for every counsellor that makes you cry, I still think there is one that allowed me to cry. And I found her and she is brilliant. But the ineffectual one that I was talking about before, she's still working. And some people must find her useful, otherwise she'd be out of a job, wouldn't she? I suppose she's just a counsellor who is unusual in her approach. A counsellor who is blunt. A counsellor who may seem tactless, but often hits the nail on the head just a bit hard. <laughs> Rather than a counsellor who tells you to imagine a colour photograph of you and your boyfriend in happier times and drain the colour from the photograph, she just tells you to have sex with a much younger man. <laughs> I can't imagine how she started. Let's call her Jean. Oh, and just so you know, the voice is going to be the same because I don't do voices. <laughs> I've always been good at giving advice. I think that's where it started. Some people even ask for it. I think you can divide people into those that give advice and those that need it. Take Denise, the fat one next door. Only the other day she said, I'm thinking of treating myself to a new bed, Jean. A single, obviously. Do they make singles in your size? <laughs> See, saved her a bit of money. She can spend the difference on books about other lonely women. <laughs> And what about Kenny? He's always asking me questions. Jean, have you seen Denise? Yes, I have. Is Denise in? Yes, she is. How is Denise? She's bloody massive. <laughs> I didn't say that. I said she was fine, if a little ruddy. <laughs> he works in Greg's. You'd think he sees her enough. <laughs> the cakes are lovely, though. I suppose my career in caregiving really took off when I went part-time at the home and joined the Samaritans. The training tells you that you're not supposed to interfere, but I didn't feel I was being used to my full potential, so I started helping out. <laughs> Most people know the usual ways, hose pipe, slitty wrists, vodka Red Bull. <laughs> One woman even rang up cracking jokes about being rubbish at tie and nuts. <laughs> I really wanted to laugh, but it just wasn't funny. <laughs> I did some research and gave advice on more interesting ways to commit suicide. Which method are you thinking about? Um, <clears throat> paracetamol. Have you thought about drinking washing up liquid? Oh, um, I haven't, no. Uh, how, how effective is that? It's pretty much foolproof. Don't be fooled by your last few moments because you will burp bubbles which will falsely cheer you up. <laughs> from the Samaritans even though my figures were the highest they'd ever had. That's when I decided to go back to college and study for an NVQ in counselling. I learned how to listen, give constructive criticism based on physical appearance and problem solving. <laughs> it's important as well if you're going to be harsh to whisper it. Then it seems nicer. <laughs> for my final project I devised a questionnaire which included the questions, were you that way when you married him? <laughs> And how many out of ten do you want to die? 